Let's get those electronics in. Some pieces like this one for the Pi are labeled and joined with self-tapping screws. Here's something that may get you. This is a Torx T6 drive, and of course I don't have that bit sitting around. Fortunately, I have a small flathead screwdriver which fits. This is not ideal and may strip it, so proceed with caution. Otherwise, time to go out and buy more tools. The pie is still hard to find, so try your best not to shore out this board. Remove your socks and discharge any static by touching the metal before working. Honestly, this method of securing to an unstable piece is stupid. However, I don't have a better idea, so I'll shush now. Repeat for the 5 volt power supply, which reverts back to common Allen key fasteners. For the 24 volt power supply, it came preset at 220, so if you need to, switch it to 115 now, because you'll probably forget later. For the controller, I chose the Octopus Pro version. In a nutshell, it has options for higher voltage, onboard support for platinum thermistors, and built-in short circuit alarm. If none of these matter to you, the non-pro version is fine. For the filtered inlet, clip the fuse and slide it back in. If you are missing this M3x10 flathead screw, it's not listed in the sourcing guide. It's in the custom BOM and easy to miss. The manual doesn't clearly show the switch orientation, so I am installing it with the prongs on the lower side. I assume the power comes in from the bottom and switched out the top. Please correct me if I'm wrong and share the knowledge. I'm making my own Z end stop, so time to break stuff. Let's start with the 20 tooth pulley. Slide it through some spare 5mm rod and use pliers to snap the flange off. It's more fragile than appears. Same with the micro switch lever. I simply squeezed the hinge in and it popped right out. Make sure the switch is oriented so the button shows through the center hole. I only see one self tapping screw hole and after pondering it for a while, I realized I used the wrong PIF part. What a mistake. Now I have to press out this pulley, which is really wedged in there. Once it is repressed into the proper piece, I add a JST connector. The switch pins need to be bent down while making sure they don't short out against the screws. For the connector, bending the pins toward the notched end is easier since they are closer to that side. You would think that after wiring NeoPixels, this would be cake. Nope, it was just as horrible. The middle connection can be solder bridged. However, I could only get tiny 30 gauge wire to stick and connect to the outer pins. Make these connections as flush as possible. The bottom of this piece butts right against the deck panel, so I used flush cutters to trim it flat. I secured a connector in place using super glue. The end stop shaft will be installed later. So I'm going with CAN bus. The X end stop relocation is easy. There are existing mount holes on the tool cartridge. I am using 24 gauge wiring and there is no polarity requirement. I also don't see any yellow wires around this area yet, so yellow it is. I soldered the outer pins for normally closed, so if the switch fails, the machine thinks it's triggered and will stop the tool head from crashing into the XY joint. Here's the problem. How do I fish these wires through the X carriage? Oof. I had to disassemble the stealth burner to attach the end stop and fish the wires through the carriage. I mounted the switch with the lever opening facing up. I found that this triggered the switch a hair faster than if mounted facing the other direction. Side note, this is what happens when you over tighten the Z Pro. Oof. Speaking of heat sets, if you haven't noticed, I have been installing all of them, whether I need it or not. That way I have backup options. If you are building to stock wiring and routing spec, the XY end stops would attach here. For my setup, I'm obviously going to skip that, so I simply screw in the missing M3 by 16 bolts. The Y end stop relocation requires searching online. Unless mistaken, you can't simply buy this piece. I set up my existing printer with a crappy enclosure made from leftover board panels. There is no official documentation on wiring this, so get creative. I'm going to bend these pins down for better clearance since the motor pulley is right behind it. As with the Z end stop, I'm going to add a JST connector. I finally bought a helping handset and wish I had it sooner. This one is less than $10 at Harbor Freight, but you can also find it at Home Depot. It's great for NeoPixels, heat sets, and tight spaces like this JST connector. I have to be honest, these are some of the worst self-tapping screws I have used. 
It doesn't tap shit, and a likely culprit is the end, which is flat and blunt. The two A-drive screws need to be replaced with slightly longer M3 by 35 screws, since this piece is 5mm thick. I don't have that, so I'm going to use an M3 by 40mm screw and a washer. Later on, I'm going to reprint this piece in matching color anyways. I am using waggle clamps, and they simply slide into this holder. It's a press fit, so no tape or glue required. It's then attached to the frame with more T-nuts. Repeat for the power inlet mounting. The remaining components use a hook mount, which easily clip in. Since the bed isn't mounted yet, these screws need to be slightly loose in case the extrusion spacing needs to be adjusted. Speaking of which, let's just get that build plate in. Quickly check to make sure it is relatively flat and within manufacturing tolerances. The bottom side has more holes for mounting the fuse and ground wire. Remove the protective covering and clean with isopropyl alcohol. I am using an abrasive scouring pad, so don't remove too much material or you will have high and low spots. I also scuff around the ground screw hole for better contact. Repeat for the top side as a rough surface will give the magnet adhesive something to stick to. Use more rubbing alcohol and paper towels to remove the dirt and debris. If your magnet is oversized, stick it right on and trim the excess with a utility knife. My magnet is cut slightly smaller than the build plate, so attaching it dry in one shot can be difficult. I am using a method from when I used to tint car windows as a hobby. FYI, the data sheet for this 300 LSE adhesive says to attach it dry, so do this at your own risk. In a low dust room, mix some baby shampoo with water. Spray that solution on your fingers to clean them. Peel the paper and spray both the magnet adhesive and build plate. Just enough so there are no dry spots. Plop the magnet on. The baby shampoo provides slip so you can slide it into position. It will continue to shift until the solution underneath is removed. Spray some more on top and use a heavy squeegee. You need to hold down hard on the magnet and squeegee hard. Work from the center out and as you keep doing this, it will start to tack in place. Check the edges to make sure the magnet does not overhang the sides. Finally, wrap a hard plastic card in a paper towel. Repeat the squeegeeing and the towel will soak up excess moisture. This is a thick magnet on a flat plate, not some flimsy film on curved windows, so there shouldn't be many problems. For insurance, rest a weighted object on top while it dries. If impatient, you can use a heat gun or hairdryer to speed things up. Once dry, cut the mounting holes. Measure and mark out the distances. A utility knife is too large. A better choice is a smaller OFA knife and deburring tool. Get creative so you only cut out what's necessary without messing up the surrounding material. Any damage may cause a flex plate to not sit flush on top. I recleaned the surface and note this heater pad has a different type of adhesive. I'm going to install this dry. Using high temp gasket maker, I add a thermal fuse to the pad directly and put some weight on it for 24 hours. I soldered the fuse and heater wires, both which are supposedly 18 gauge. For the ground wire, I decided to use 16 gauge wiring, but minimum spec is 18 gauge. The ring terminal is also not included in the sourcing guide, so make sure you buy some. As for mounting the bed, I am following the measurements in the assembly manual. The plate should be 38 millimeters away from the front extrusion edge. I chose to fully tighten the front left screw and left the rest slightly loose to allow for thermal expansion. For the Z end stop shaft, I am going to measure the height with the flex plate on. As shown before, overcut it and grind it down. You can't do the same if you cut it too short. As you can see, it should be slightly higher than the build plate so a feeler gauge can't pass through unless the shaft is pressed down. I grind it a flat so a set screw will keep the shaft from falling out when the printer is turned upside down. If you jumped ahead and connected the motor wires to the controller, just know that manually moving the gantry may introduce back current. On this printer, even when unplugged, you can see the screen flickering as I move the tool head around. I would recommend disconnecting the motor wires before continuing. Manually move the gantry back until the rear Y end stop clicks. At this point, adjust the Z end stop positioning. Because the Y end stop juts out, the nozzle will hit the bed instead of the pin. 
The bed mounting measurement from earlier no longer applies. We need to shift the bed forward. The nozzle should strike the pin dead center. After that, anchor down the Z and stop. And that's it for today's video. Next video is wiring and depending on your setup, you may have choices. In my CAN bus setup, I only have the Z cable chain, whereas the traditional setup will also have X and Y chains. What's important to note is that silicone wire is minimum spec for running inside these chains, and some have had better luck with PTFE wiring. You have seen me use silicone wire up until now. This Y end stop, along with the AB motor wires, will need to go through the Z cable chain. Therefore, if these are PVC wires, you will need to terminate and use PTFE or silicone wire before they enter the chain. PTFE wire is more expensive, and if you buy from AliExpress, it takes time to ship. So figure out how much wire you need and start ordering sooner than later. As always, please like and subscribe, and see you all next time.